Just where does it come from, this strange urge that overwhelms otherwise sensible middle-class people to take to the streets aboard huge pieces of Americana built for a place entirely alien to us? This is not America. America is a place where fuel is cheaper than water, and the only corner your car is required to negotiate in a journey of a thousand miles is the one into the sweeping driveway in front of your mock Georgian mansion. So this fixation must be some sort of madness, surely. Well, one car from over there that's doing really rather well over here is this from Chrysler Jeep, the Grand Cherokee. Grand meaning big, and boy is it. Now this ain't no namby-pamby soft roader. This is actually a very capable all-terrain vehicle. Oh yes sir, eh? And if its rugged good looks aren't enough to convince you of that, then a quick glance down the spec sheet will do. In this, the limited edition Grand Cherokee, it would be shorter to make a list of things that you don't get. And I can't think of any. Air conditioning, electric seats and a 10 CD auto changer are to be found scattered around the very comfortable cabin. But let's face it, that's about as much as its off-road features will ever be. Just a selling point, facts and figures on a spec sheet. Something to boast about to the other ladies and chaps who lunch down at the tennis club. Maybe it's a power thing, the desire to take control and dominate what is undeniably a very big beastie indeed. And I don't just mean the bulk and size of the thing physically, the engine, a 4.7 litre V8. It'll go from 0 to 60 miles an hour in around 8 seconds. That's madness! The closest thing I can think of is it must be like those poor people whose bungalows are undermined by subsidence and drop off the edge of a cliff. Sitting in a bungalow falling off the edge of a cliff as it hits terminal velocity probably feels a bit like flooring this thing. So to driving the thing, well, it's an off-roader, so taut and pinned to the tarmac is not on the menu. Nevertheless, it's not as rock and roll as you might think. There's quite a surprising amount of body control. It's perhaps only let down by the rather chunky hybrid off-road, on-road tyres, but you don't feel like you're about to bounce off the first corner and up the nearest tree. Of course, it's not all image for image's sake. There are a few really practical points here. There's no doubting the car's ability to get you out of trouble should you indulge in any kind of off-road excursion. But there's also tons and tons of room. The boot's plenty big enough, unlike its smaller sibling, the Cherokee, which is, well, a little challenged in the load space area. There's also plenty of space in the cabin and no shortage of creature comforts either. Should you ever need to tow anything as ghastly as a caravan, you can, several probably. OK, sure. So most owners probably never will romp across the field in their Grand Cherokee like a V8 gas-guzzling four-wheel drive version of The Hills Are Alive to the sound of music. It's a lifestyle thing like muesli and wearing running shoes in everyday life. So most Cherokees will never actually have their off-road abilities tested to the limit. Fine, four befores don't. Then neither do coupes. Find me a coupe or a sports car that is ever legally anyway fully taken to the limit of its abilities. No, it's more about comfort and practicality and something that's a bit different. As long as there are people who are prepared to pay that bit extra for something that does stuff they might not need, but looks good, there'll be cars like the Grand Cherokee. Now, off-road, on-road. Off-road, on-road. It is very bumpy off-road. I think we'll go on-road. Just this once.